Baptist Church. I know that God will bless you as we worship together today. So let's go ahead and begin. Rodney, if you would please. in our opening prayer this morning. Let us pray this morning. Our most wonderful, loving, heavenly Father, I come to you this morning praying, Father, that you will just lead and guide and direct us in the way that you would have us to go. Help us always, Father, just to lean on you because there's no other way to get through this world without you. I pray, Father, now that you'll be with Brother Razor as he brings the message this morning and may it go out to the world that your, your love and your redemption plan that you have made for man, Father, will, that Somehow we can get this message across that all the world needs Jesus as their only Savior. Be with us here at Fireview now, Father, and help us to move on for you and proclaim your word. Be with all that duty would bind us to pray for now, Father, and, and just keep us always in your will and help us just to praise and glorify and honor you. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you want to turn and wave to those around you, welcome them in and things. Wave to you there at, at home and stuff that way as well. Uh, as always, I tried to do my part today. If you haven't noticed, I tried to dress for spring. You know, to try to maybe just a little bit of hint for it to, uh, to, uh, to come in uh, that way. Also, uh, this is fuzzy February. So uh, February has not been real good to me, so I'm going to get rid of this, and hopefully all of February and March will go that way. But uh, thinking of that, again, I want to thank you all uh, for your prayers. You know, all kidding aside, February has not been a good month for me. Uh, but I think I'm back up on my feet. I think I'm doing, doing well. Uh, Miss Lisa, I know you've been praying for her, and <laughs> she appreciates that uh, very much. Without her help, I wouldn't. Uh, been able to, to get through this, but I, I think I'm on the mend and uh, have you all and God to thank for that. Uh, I also want to thank you uh, as a church for how we work together through the ice storm. I mean, I had people that would, would uh, text me and things and say they'd go run if they needed anything, share their house uh, if they needed anything. Uh, you may remember Lisa and I stayed, the church had power, and so Lisa and I stayed there uh, in case anybody wanted to come, we had a couple offers, but nobody came. And I don't, I don't say that about Lisa and I staying there to, to brag or anything, but I want you all to know, especially anybody that's listening to us, that this is the kind of church that Fairview is. Through this ice storm, I knew that if there was anything that I needed, 
that somebody would take care of it. I knew that if I needed to go and stay somewhere, that somebody's door was open. And that's the way it is for this church, that we care for one another, that we love one another, and we pray uh, for one another. So if, if you're going to church somewhere, I'm not looking to steal you, but if you're not going to church somewhere, this is a place that will care for you, your family, your children, uh, through thick and thin, and we invite you to come and, and to be a part of that as we work together as the body of Christ. And again, I want to just thank you all uh, for your generosity. I think I can promise that the deacons and I will be meeting this Wednesday. <laughs> I have been putting this meeting off through the weather, through my health, and different things, but this Wednesday... Uh, we should meet, and when we do meet, uh, we're going to con we continue to pray and seek God's direction on the on how we should move forward with a fair view. We're going to be looking at when and how uh, we can open up for our, our Sunday school classes and our activities, and and move forward uh, that way. Uh, so uh, this has been heavy on your hearts, and of course you know that it's been heavy on the hearts of the deacons. And just continue to pray together with us uh, as we seek God's will in this and we move forward uh, from here. But we will meet Wednesday uh, at, at 7 o'clock. The nominating committee is still taking recommendations for a 7th, 8th grade Sunday school teacher. Uh, let us know if you would like to do that or if you want to nominate somebody. Uh, also, we're looking for an RA, RA leader uh, as well. So uh, be thinking and praying about that. Don't forget to be using your foundational verse each and every day, and God will bless you. Any other announcements? All right, run if you would, please. All right, our first song this morning is going to be Footsteps of Jesus.
we then let's take the next few moments in uh, silent prayer and thanking God for the blessings that he has bestowed upon your life. Let's pray together, please. God, we do thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon our lives, how you shower us each and every day with things that are beyond our imagination. You care for our every step. You know our every thought and that you are there to take care of our every need. We thank you of knowing that every good and perfect gift comes from you. And Father, just, just thank you for all that you continue to do for us. And we'll give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now please enjoy our special music. Thank you. 
right? Don't you feel like there was not a toe that was not tapping up there? You just sort of feel like I almost, that was, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. If you would, uh, turn with me to uh, Romans chapter uh, 8 this morning. We're going to begin in verse 1. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. If you would please, if you're not already standing after that wonderful song, <laughs> stand as we read from God's word this morning. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, as we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, for if we die after the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this glorious day. Thank you for this opportunity to come together and to meet in this place. Thank you for your spirit that fills this place and holds and keeps and lifts us up. I pray that we open up our ears to hear your message. We open our hearts to live it out in our lives. I pray if there's one that does not know you this day, that they will surrender their lives to you and receive the forgiveness of sin and the hope of eternal life. That I know that you will take our lives and change them according to thy will. Be with us, dear God, this day and always. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, amen. Rome, you may be seated. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Let that sink in. We can stop right there. That's what we're going to talk about. And sometimes I think we may overlook this verse or we don't let the significance of it sink in. But listen, there is therefore now no condemnation. Do you need to know the Greek definition of the word no? No, you don't because you know what it means. There is absolutely none. There is nothing that is there. There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Think about that. None. When you stand before God covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible proclaims that you will be blameless, that you will be holy, that you will be righteous, that there will be no condemnation. Now, after that song that the choir just sang, we ought to, <laughs> I mean, think about that. 
I stood before my father and knew that I had, should have condemnation. I know what that side feels like. Think about that. God is not waiting around to punish his children. God is not standing there with a big two before waiting to smack you up the side of the head the moment you make a mistake. He wants us to do well. And he grieves when we, we, when we don't and we go the other way and we turn our backs. But the Bible says he is not going to condemn us if we believe in his son, Jesus Christ. Those who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. Verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. We are set free from that law. We are given life through the Spirit. God wants us to live. Jesus came so that we would have life. So that we would have abundant life. And I probably should tell you the Greek definition of that word abundant, but you think of abundant and then think of anything more that you can, and that's what that, that is. Think about that. Now, sometimes people have twisted that verse around and things and said, well, that means God's going to give me abundant money. That's not what it says. And if I had to choose between abundant money and abundant life, <laughs> I think you're with me there. We're going to choose abundant life. That's what the Bible promises us. Through Christ we are free to live life. We are given the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to do that. Verse 3 says, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin. Who now gets condemned? Sin is condemned in the flesh. The law has no power over us. But God sending his son Jesus Christ in the likeness of sinful flesh. His purpose, his goal from the beginning of time was to condemn sin. Not you, his children. He wants us to be set free. He's going to cast Satan into that bottomless pit that he shall never get out of when the time is fulfilled according to him. But the children of God are set free. Those walking in the spirit. We do not need to fear death. But we have overcome death through Jesus Christ. Think about that. Many people tell me, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't teach, I can't witness, I can't pray, I can't preach. God says, so what? There is no punishment for failing. I do not, Jesus says, condemn you. If you are on my side, Jesus says, all I ask is that you play the game. That you let me worry about the winning and losing. You have been set free. Jesus Christ has paid the price. Verse 4 says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Because of Jesus Christ who walked not after the flesh but after the spirit. See Jesus Christ has fulfilled that. I know this might amaze some of you but I played basketball in high school and we won't go into all those things and stuff that way but I was always afraid to shoot anytime anybody passed me the ball I passed it as fast as I could because I was afraid to shoot because I know this will surprise you I wasn't that great of a shot anyway that way I was always afraid I would miss and finally, the coach did call me aside sometime, you know, because I'd pass up wide open shots. Well, not maybe the ones right under the basket, but things that way. And he said, Razor, if you don't shoot, you can't make a bucket. He goes, I don't really care whether it goes in or not, but if you don't shoot, it's definitely not going to go in. 
shoot the ball. And if you'll allow me, God says the same thing. Play the game. Shoot the ball. Do your best. And no matter what happens, I am not going to condemn you. I am there to help you, to empower you, to lift you up. You know, when we come out of this pandemic, and notice I said when we come out, not if we come out. When we come out of this pandemic, I believe that God is going to be busting his church wide open. And for that to happen, we are going to need to have people in place and be ready for that to happen, to be praying for that to happen. We're going to need child care workers to be able to be there during our services. We're going to need Sunday school teachers. I'd love to have two Sunday school teachers in each class that we have. We are going to, I think God is going to do an amazing work when we open our churches back up. But we need to be willing and we need to be ready to do what God has called us to do. And he's not going to condemn us. He's going to empower us by his spirit to do that job. Verse 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. We are either doing things of the flesh or we are doing the things of the spirit. And he's very clear there. If we mind the flesh, we can't be serving the spirit. But if we are serving the spirit, the flesh is gone. The flesh has condemnation. Because when we serve, we have no condemnation. Think about this. I don't know during the pandemic. Anybody play Monopoly during the pandemic? Okay, got at least one there that way. All right. What happens when you get the get out of jail free card? Everybody know, know Monopoly? You go around the board and there's a corner that says go to jail, go directly to jail, do not pass go, do not collect $200. Even if you don't know the game Monopoly, I think you're getting the idea there. That when you land on that space, you are penalized. You go to jail, you don't have a choice. But there's a little card. <laughs> that you can get. And it says, get out of jail, free card. And sometimes you take that, at least I did when I played, and you hit it under the board or things or stuff that way, you know, so nobody knew that you got it. Because when you landed on that spot, everybody goes, ah, Vaughn's got to go to jail. Vaughn doesn't get $200. It's so funny that way. And then you just sort of smile and you whip out that card and you lay it down and you say, I do not have to go to jail because I have the get out of jail free card. That's what God is trying to tell us here. In life, if we walk after the spirit, when Satan tries to tell us how bad we are, and how much trouble that we cause, and how terrible we are, and how much we don't deserve things, we can laugh right in his face and say, listen, Jesus set me free. There is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. That's the promise of God. And I don't, like I said, I don't know if any of you played Monopoly that way, but like I said, the joy of playing that get out of free jail card and having people want to buy it from you and things that way. But to know that you have that, that's nothing compared to life. To know that there is no condemnation. Jesus has set us free. I know I make mistakes. I know that I'm trying to serve God. I know that as long as I walk with Jesus, maybe I don't understand, but I know that I am not condemned through Jesus Christ. Now, this freedom is reserved for those who are walking after the Spirit. I hope you've noticed that. Verse, verses 6 through 8 are very plain. For to be carnal-minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
The carnal mind, verse 7 says, is an enemy. It is an enemy against God. It is neither subject to the law of God, neither can be. And then verse 8 puts it very, very plainly. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And if that's all there was, this would be a very sorry, sorry, sorry day. But that is in there so you know the truth. If you are following the flesh, if you are not following Jesus Christ, if you are trying to do things only on your own, the Bible says you cannot please God. Even it's filled with good works. If you are following yourself, you cannot please God. But it doesn't end there, does it? And of course, we've already taken care of that as well. If you believe in Jesus Christ, if you are following the Spirit, that God sets us free, because verse 9 follows that, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Again, he says that again. But verse 10 says, but, but, but if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And if that's not enough, he says in verse 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the, his spirit that dwelleth in you. There is so much in that. To realize that as a child of God, God's Holy Spirit dwells in you, lives in you, takes up residence in you. He's not a visitor. He is there. And his purpose, as his purpose was to raise Jesus Christ from the dead, his purpose is to raise God's children from the dead. With no condemnation at all. He says you will quicken your mortal bodies. See, our mortal bodies can't be quickened. They're dead and there's nothing we can do about them. But the power of God that dwells within his children can quicken those mortal bodies. And those are not just words. Easter's coming. And what happened on Easter? The stone was rolled away and his body was not there. And the Bible is promising that that same power is available to his children, to those who are walking after the Spirit. Notice he said walking after the Spirit. He didn't say sitting after the Spirit. He didn't say laying down. He didn't say learning about or knowing about. He said walking. That's moving. And that's why he says there's no condemnation. Go ahead and move. Go ahead and walk. Go ahead and do. We're human. We're going to make mistakes. We're not going to do it right. But he says that's okay. Walk in the spirit. Live in the spirit. And I have come to set you free. So many Christians are living in cages with the door open and they're afraid to step outside. They've been set free. The door's not locked. The door's wide open, just like the doors are open here at the church. They are free to walk outside. They are free to live. They are free to experience abundant life that God has for them. But instead, they stay in their cage. That's why I said, when this pandemic is over, we're going to need to walk in the spirit. We're going to need to come out of that door. And we're going to need to minister like never before to a lost and dying world. We do not live under condemnation. But we have been set free. Verse 12 states that we are not debtors to the flesh. We are debtors, I'll say that backwards, we are debtors not to the flesh 
to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, verse 13 says, you shall die. And that's just as plain as when we started about no condemnation. Once again, if you are not following Jesus Christ, if you have not allowed him to come into your heart, if you've not asked him for the forgiveness of your sins, if you are not walking in the spirit, you shall die. And again, if we stop there, <laughs> but it doesn't. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, if you put the deeds of the body to death, if you turn and go the other direction, if you look into the eyes of Jesus Christ, if you live for Him, if you ask Him for the forgiveness of His sins, which of your sins, which He so freely gives to each and every one who asks, what does the end of verse 13 say? Ye shall live. Think about that. Think about that. The devil tries to make us believe that we are bound to him, that we owe him, that he has the power, that we can never be set free, that we are worthless and junk, and who could ever... Listen, if I was able to marry Lisa Garo. <laughs> anything is possible in this, in this world. Many of you didn't know her last name, did you, that way? I let that out. God has set us free. If we will but put the things of the flesh and the body aside, if we will, if we will crucify them and not follow them, we are not condemned. We are set free by the power of the Holy Spirit over death and the grave. We have forgiveness of our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. And as followers of Christ, his spirit lives in us. We are not on death row awaiting some pardon. Jesus Christ has set us free. Free, the chains are broken. But only as we walk in the Spirit, only as we follow Him. And Christians, I want to encourage you today to continue to walk in that Spirit, to continue to cry out to God, to continue to allow Him to use your life, and that you would live each and every breath that you take knowing that you have been set free. There is no condemnation. But I also want you to know today that if you are not following Jesus Christ, today is the day for you to do that. Lisa's going to come and play, and as she plays, you can right where you are. Those of us here at the church, these altars are open. If you want to come, there's anything on your heart that you want to lay here, that you want to ask God to encourage you in your life, to help you in your life, to, to draw you closer to Him, you lay that on this altar. But if you're listening to me and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now, you can get on your knees. You can ask him for the forgiveness of your sins. You can ask him to come into your life. And he promises you that he will. You tell him that you're willing to walk after the Spirit. You tell him you're willing to put your earthly life down. You tell him that you want to live for him and his promise is therefore there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But the first step is yours. Accept him into your heart and God will pour himself into you. Do that now as Lisa plays and we pray. Let Jesus come into your life.
God, I thank you that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I pray that as we leave this place that we will live our lives. I pray and I know that you are with those who have turned their lives over to you this day. I know that you will forgive them of their sins. I know that you will empower them to live. And I know that you have set them free. May we leave this place and proclaim that message that the world will know the love and forgiveness and the power of Jesus Christ in their lives. In everything we do, let's praise his name. In his precious name we do pray. Amen.